Hello, and thanks for taking the time to watch our presentation. We are the Informed Prostate Cancer Support Group of San Diego, California, and have produced this DVD for general distribution at no charge. Our group is very active in spreading current information about prostate cancer. We feel that the following PowerPoint is one of the most important pieces of reference that has been presented in years. Duke Bonn, M.D., of the Prostate Institute of America, has described and quantified the two terms usually called watchful waiting and active surveillance. These two terms are frequently used, but this is the first time that anyone has really quantified the tests to help identify likely candidates. Please use this in your support group presentations and feel free to reproduce, print, and pass it on to doctors, medical institutions, and family. Thank you. Active Surveillance in the Management of Early Stage Prostate Cancer. A presentation by Dr. Duke Bond, MD, to the Informed Prostate Cancer Support Group of San Diego, California. Duke Bond, MD, is the Medical Director of Prostate Institute of America and Clinical Professor of Urology at the University of Southern California. A similar written presentation was included in the March 2011 newsletter, Choices, published by PACT, Inc., Patients Advocates for Advanced Cancer Treatments. We present for your consideration that active surveillance, often called watchful waiting, can be effective in the management of early stage prostate cancer. We offer the perfect 10 points as a program for identifying the candidates and how we should watch the cancer. In the PSA screening era, over-detection, over-treatment, or both are becoming more apparent. Only a small percentage of men with low-risk disease chose active surveillance. A majority of patients are not offered active surveillance at diagnosis. Patients with low-risk tumors or without extended life expectancy may not benefit from treatment. In the U.S., 75% of men 75 years or older with low-risk disease are treated rather than being offered active surveillance. According to CAPSURE, 94% of all men with low-grade prostate cancer receive radical treatment. The goal of active surveillance is to delay the treatment as long as it is reasonable to avoid collateral damage and loss of function without losing the window of opportunity for successful local therapy. Here are the perfect 10 points developed by Dr. Duke Bond. Each will be discussed further. Gleason grade. The Gleason grade is proven to be one of the most important independent predictors for cancer aggressiveness and final outcome. Grade of six or less is ideal, but a seven equals three plus four may be acceptable if accompanied by significant medical comorbidity or short life expectancy. Serum PSA level. The serum PSA level should be less than 10. It's preferable to use PSA density, which is the serum PSA divided by the prostate volume. This should be less than 0.15. It should be noted that the etiology or cause for a high PSA can be an enlarged prostate due to benign prostatic hyperplasia, prostatitis, atrophic changes which are benign, or prostate cancer. Stage of the cancer. T1C is cancer not felt by digital rectal exam nor seen on ultrasound, but the needle biopsy is positive. T2A is a cancer that is in half or less of one side, either left or right lobe, and is either felt by digital rectal exam or seen on ultrasound. T2B is cancer in more than half of one side. T2C is cancer in both lobes. 
T3A and B is cancer extending outside of the capsule to the seminal vesicles. T4 is cancer invading the bladder neck or rectum. For active surveillance, T1C or T2A are preferred, or also T2B or T2C if there is comorbidity and short life expectancy. Be aware that random systemic biopsies often understage the cancer. This is an example of an ultrasound taken of Mr. CW. The right frame is an ultrasound image showing neovascularity in the right base of the prostate. The left frame is the same image enhanced with color Doppler wherein the increased blood flow in the cancerous area lights up as red. Dr. Bond thought the area looked suspicious enough to investigate further and enhanced the view to show that not only was there a problem in the right base but also in the right seminal vesicle. Again, the right frame is an ultrasound image and the left frame is enhanced by color Doppler. Number of positive biopsy cores. Less than a third of total cores taken are positive. It's a general observation that a higher number of positive tissue cores among biopsy specimen are associated with a larger volume cancer with advanced stage. This is based on random systemic biopsies, not targeted biopsies, which take less numbers of cores. Percentage of tumor invasion. There should be less than 50% in any one of the tissue cores. The percent of cores positive for cancer and biopsy specimen is strongly predictive of tumor stage and volume. PSA doubling time should be more than two years, preferably more than three years. In Dr. Klotz's paper, there were only two deaths out of nearly 300 men in an active surveillance group. These two men had a PSA doubling time of less than two years. Tumor neovascularity, which is abnormally increased blood supply. It's known that the higher the abnormal blood supply to the tumor, the higher the Gleason grade with aggressive biological behavior. Only color Doppler transrectal ultrasound can measure the blood flow level. It's preferable that the level be one plus or less, which is the same as background normal tissue. Tumor volume, tumor location. Tumor volume, as measured by color Doppler transrectal ultrasound, should be less than one cc. Tumor volume has been shown to be proportionate to Gleason grade, capsular penetration, seminal vesicle invasion, lymph node metastasis, and capsular margins of resection. 80% of the tumors are in the peripheral zone and have a greater chance to have an extracapsular extension towards the neurovascular bundle and seminal vesicles. Transitional zone tumors are about 20% of all tumors and are usually detected late with large volume along with a high PSA. They have a less aggressive biologic behavior. This is a diagram to illustrate the transitional and peripheral zones. The transitional zone is blue and the peripheral zone is white. Urine prostate cancer 3 gene test or PCA3 PSA is prostate organ specific, not prostate cancer specific. PCA3 is strongly expressed in 95% of prostate cancer metastasis. Ploidy. Measurement of the nuclear DNA content allows classification of human cancers as either diploid or aneuploid. The test is performed with existing biopsy tissue specimens and no new biopsy is needed. Studies have shown that patients with diploid cancers, meaning they have normal DNA content in cancer cells, have longer cancer-free intervals and survival than those with non-diploid content. Diploid tumors are also more responsive to hormone therapy. Even though its popularity has faded lately, it may be added information that a cancer would be low-risk disease. The first six criteria on the list are more important than the rest. 
If a patient's cancer does not meet more than six criteria, it could be considered as an intermediate or even a high-risk disease. Follow-up schedule for active surveillance. Have a PSA test every three months for two years, then every six months assuming the PSA is stable. Have a follow-up biopsy at one year, and then every three to five years until age 80. Have a color Doppler transrectal ultrasound in alternate visits, along with a digital rectal exam. Recently, the urine PCA3 test was proposed as a tumor marker in the management of active surveillance. The Informed Prostate Cancer Support Group is a nonprofit independent organization headquartered in San Diego, California. Its goal is to share knowledge and experience about prevention and treatment by networking with others. Our monthly meetings, newsletters, and library are a forum to learn from each other as well as from guest speakers who provide insight to the latest developments in diagnosis and treatment. We meet in a modern auditorium provided by the Sanford Burnham Medical Research Institute and regularly attract audiences varying from 75 to 140 people.